my piece of advice is to follow your dream. Have a dream from the, from the start. And you, you may not achieve it uh, initially. You may not be able to start off with your dream. It, uh, to be in the farming business is very difficult. It, it may take you a while to get to where you can uh, see there's something that you can do, but uh, d don't give up on your dream and uh, follow it through. And, and even if you have to do something else to start off with. William Bill Phillips was born on April 28, 1940 in Norfolk, Virginia, and he's been involved in agriculture ever since. My father mainly gave me the taste of, of growing things and he planted that in me and I, I saw that, you know, the value of growing your own food, uh, literally most, most of our vegetables and fruit came from our own, own garden. So mother canned the vegetables and we ate the vegetables and the jams and jellies all, all year long. Uh, had a number of, of agriculture jobs uh, in, in high school. I, I enjoyed that and I, I began to think more and more in terms of working in some type of horticulture thing. I went to uh, Virginia Tech. Uh, eventually I made it through and I graduated in horticulture with uh, a real desire to stay in the horticulture business. After uh, I completed my time at Virginia Tech, I uh, joined the Peace Corps and I went to Ecuador and worked with the Heifer Project in Ecuador and I was in a small, small town there and we did 4-H work and extension work, work there, so I, I enjoyed that. After, as I was winding down in, uh, in Ecuador, I began to think about going back to school. So I, I applied to the University of Florida and I operated on a scholarship for the two years that I was at the University of Florida. It was here that Bill would finalize his education and meet the love of his life, Lori. Well, we were both in graduate school. He happened to live in a boarding house across from us. We didn't know him at all, but um, it was my birthday and uh, they, they were lighting the cake and singing happy birthday. And he and the, another young man that um, was boarding across the street, they had come out on the sidewalk and when they heard Happy birthday, they started clapping. And I had a kind of a very spontaneous roommate and she ran out into the street and said, if you're gonna clap, you have to come to the party. So they brought him onto the porch and his friend Galen. And uh, that's how we met. And that's all she wrote. 11 months later, we were married. He's a good Christian man, that's all I can say. And he's a, a wonderful husband and a wonderful father and grandfather. I've always thought it was a great man, whether it was in the Hall of Fame or not. So. After starting their own family, they would lay roots in Marion County, and it would be the start of an incredible career. They sent me out here to interview Mr. Rowan, who was, uh, Edsel Rowan was the extension director at that time. And she, he said, well, meet me up in Evanston at the uh, Richardson Cattle Ranch. And so I remember going up there and finding the place and. We worked all day uh, weighing and grading calves and I was able to operate the gate. That was always a, a good job of mine. I was always a, a little bit apprehensive of doing other things with animals, but I could operate the gate. So anyway, we spent a day and at a big farm lunch at their place, but spent a whole day working there. And at the end of the day, I, I uh, I was getting apprehensive about the uh, interview. And I said, well, Mr. Rowan, we, we need to, are we gonna have an interview today? He said, we just had the interview and uh, you're hired. And so that's how I came to Marion County. And when I was hired, I became the uh, horticulture agent and the uh, citrus agent. It was through this opportunity that he would meet and work with all types of individuals, assisting with fruit crops, commercial vegetables, and anything else that came his way. He was instrumental in teaching different uh, extension opportunities for farmers, whether it was citrus related or nursery. Uh, he would do that down in the southern end of the county, and then he would possibly do a peanut meeting the next day up on the north end of the county, and then be working at the bull sale, uh, helping with that, or the youth fair. Uh, at that time, there was just less extension agents than there are in today's world. Uh, and you had to wear many different hats. And Bill Phillips was great at wearing many different hats of different disciplines and helping many of the farmer groups around our county. 
super helpful. Uh, in fact, I, I think Bill epitomizes what a public servant should be or, or is. Um, very sincere, very humble person too. Uh, uh, Bill and I have been good friends now for a little over 50 years and uh, he's one of the most sincere, humble people I know. He uh, is never looking for the spotlight. Uh, he's always uh, wanting to help others and acknowledge uh, and, and give them more knowledge on, on what to do with their uh, agriculture questions. He's a friend and he's always willing to be available to help you in any situation, whether it's an ag situation or a personal situation. He's always willing with whatever thing you're facing at the time. He's just always a friend. That's what I can say about Bill, always a friend. And he's just the best friend I've ever would want to have. And that's, that's been since 1970 six that I came to work here um, and so it's that many years of friendship rather than my boss or my co-worker. During his tenure at Extension Services he worked to establish a freeze warning program with the latest weather information on freeze nights. The people were what we really cared about. When the freezes and all came, and, and, and of course it hurt, hurt our hearts, it really did. And Bill was so upset about the people that were losing everything they had. And Bill was always very diligent on that because what we would do is it was a cold night, I would come to Bill's, the Ag Center. And then Bill and I would sit there and growers would call in from all over the county getting temperatures. And back then we didn't have all the sophisticated gear we have now, the fawn and everything else. We had just a big old teletype sitting in there, a big old green teletype. And it'd go off about every hour and it'd have this big old long sheet of yellow paper come out. And, and we'd tear it off and see what was happening in the panhandle, where, how the cold was coming in. And the girls would call in and say, hey, listen, what's coming? What are we looking at? How, what's the temperature here? What's the temperature there? Never missed a beat. It's always there. Always there for people. He, he cared about the growers. He was very conscientious. And, and then later on when he got to be the director, he was same same bill, always caring about what he did. What could you expect from an old Peace Corps man? Bill was also instrumental in establishing the Master Gardener program to assist residents in identifying and solving issues in their home gardens. One of the best things that he created was the Master Gardener Festival. Um, I remember he and I talking about, you know, with the core of volunteers that the Master Gardeners have, why can't we have a garden festival? And why can't they manage it and, and handle it? I don't know if he had the vision that the Master Gardener Festival was just gonna go through a, a huge two-day weekend where 10,000 people came um, and just, you know, were educated, bought plants, you know, helped the community. And that was, to me, that's one of his best accomplishments is the Master Gardener Festival. Much of what we see today is things that he planted or sowed many years ago. He laid the foundation for supporting the bull sale, the youth fair, uh, various events at the Dave Bailey Arena there. So I think much of the success of the Marion County Extension Office today is laid by the foundation that Bill Phillips did 20 years ago. Bill would retire from Extension in 1996 and would embark on his dream. I can't tell you how rewarding it was when, when I operated that little fruit stand and when I'd go home with three or $400 in cash, as opposed to getting a check from the Extension Service, seeing that money, seeing people come in and pay you money for you know what you've grown, it's just a whole different level, you know? But, you know, we didn't get rich with the grow, but it's hard to explain what that meant to me. Maybe it wouldn't mean the same to everybody, but it meant a lot to me. He was really excited about it. And um, so he did a lot of work because the grove had been, it was in really bad repair. So he had to do a lot of pruning and he had to, they really had to start the grove over. And he put a lot into it. He loved it. 
and then it got frozen out again, and then he had to restart it again, but he still loved it. And uh, then when he was able to have a product that he could sell, um, I remember when he started, he and my youngest daughter uh, were out on the, just on the side of the road, selling out of the back of his truck. And um, that was a, you know, a proud moment for him that he, he had a product he could sell. And then over the years, he, um, he's very creative. And so he came up with this idea of um, building the barn and making it look like it was old and that it had always been there. And he spent a lot of time going around and finding things that were um, antique or that would have been appropriate for that age that he made the barn look like it was. And people really thought it was there forever. And they would, um, he had a gas pump put in front of it. And sometimes people would stop and try and get gas, although it's just, you know, to look at. And um, he had a lot of different things in the store that people enjoyed looking at. And he enjoyed when our grandchildren and um, could come out and work with him for the day, you know, and uh, help sell the, the stuff or pack things, and they liked that. And so our whole family got involved in it. And uh, I, I was working full time, but uh, I would go out there on weekends or whenever we had a, like Christmas, you know, we had a lot of product that we had to put out, and so I would go out and help. and. We had some friends also that got involved in that. So he just had a good time uh, doing what, what he loved to do. Bill served in numerous professional organizations such as the Florida Association of County Agriculture Agents, Marion County Farm Bureau, Florida Cattlemen's Association, Florida State Horticulture Association, Salvation Army Board of Directors, and the Southeastern Youth Fair Board. He was recognized by the Florida Association of County Agriculture Agents with the Distinguished Service Award in 1986. He was also recognized by WMOP with an Award of Appreciation for 20 years of service in 1996 and was honored by the Marion County Cattlemen's Association with the Award of Gratitude for Service in 1996. Well, it makes me feel honored to receive the recognition, I think. Sometimes I think unworthy that when I look at all the people who got the award in the past, I think, well, I'm not necessarily like them, but I appreciate it anyway. And uh, so I'm, I'm thankful for the award and, and, and enjoy it and uh, proud to share it with my children and grandchildren and, and friends and, and thankful for the people that nominated me and uh, have been a part of the video for it. Bill Phillips is the 2023 inductee into the Marion County Agriculture Hall of Fame.